Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, this is going to be my trailer breakdown for parts four and five, which will be like a two hour sort of finale when we come back to this uh, crossover in uh, uh, mid January. It comes back on January 14th, uh, American time. But of course, let's actually watch that trailer right now. Where am I? You're in the Speed Force, Barry. Oliver. <laughs> The anti-monitor is at the dawn of time. He's extremely powerful. The eight of us might not be enough. Oh my God. Crisis on Infinite Earths. The CW's crossover event concludes January 14th. So yeah, it's a short trailer and it does seem like it's containing at least mostly footage from episode four by the look of it, but potentially like maybe a slither of stuff from episode five. It depends. I think most of it's from episode four. Um, and we'll come back to, you know, exactly what's happening there. But of course, the end of episode three, the big cliffhanger, we see, uh, pretty much a lot of crap go down. That's the best way to put it. The main thing being that the multiverse was completely destroyed. All the earths were destroyed. Earth one was the last one. We thought maybe we'd saved it. And then, uh, no, nah, Harbinger comes around, actually kills the monitor. Um, this is actually the anti-monitor in control of Harbinger takes the monitor, uh, it's like power and energy and kills him goes off and that's when we see pretty much, you know, Earth-1 get destroyed. The Wave Rider is pretty much the last thing existing in the multiverse um, with all the heroes on it. And the Paragons are taken away to the actual, um, the vanishing uh, points, which is from Legends of Tomorrow, uh, season one and two. I don't think it appears after that. Um, so they're there. So we're going to pick up with them next episode. And we'll bring that up in this trailer as well, um, because I think something fairly big is going to happen at the vanishing point potentially. Um, that happens in the comics. Um, but yeah, everyone else is destroyed. They're taken. Pariah wasn't there. I don't think at the end, was he? No, I don't think he was. If he was, then disregard this. But he actually goes elsewhere. If we follow the comics, he gets taken elsewhere following these events. Um, but yeah, it's going to be hopefully pretty crazy, especially episode four. But of course, before we go through this breakdown, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on what we go over, what you're looking forward to most in this episode, or maybe all these episodes, or maybe a specific episode and various theories you might have. Let me know all of them down there in the comments. Of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it as well. But we start off the trailer by seeing Barry thrown back by something. I have literally no idea what he's hit by. He's hit by something. It looks like a bar or some sort of just like thing that's fallen off the wall or the ceiling. It doesn't look like a weapon of anything. We just know Barry's knocked back. Whether this is real or not, that's another question. What we talk about next, you know, makes it seem it's not real and it's somewhere else, but um, he gets knocked back at least. But we hear Barry ask, you know, where the hell he is? Like, where am I? Uh, where am I? Sorry. And this is when we have Oliver, of all people, telling him that he is in the Speed Force. Now, I guess the big question with Oliver here now is whether Oliver is replacing Nora in regards to who the Speed Force takes the form of when it talks to Barry, or if this is Oliver as the Spectre making himself known and you know present, if you want to call it, or make him, making himself a presence within the Speed Force and talking to Barry. I guess that's the big question there, obviously in episode three, we had Oliver walk off with Jim Corrigan, AKA the Spectre to definitely become the new Spectre. And we'll talk about that later in, the, in this video. But I guess, at the, I guess at this point, it matters whether he's at that point, he is the Spectre and can appear to Barry like this, or whether this is just like some sort of speed force form talking to Barry. Because the speed force does exist out of space and time. So that would still be in existence. So technically, if Barry had was running through the speed force when all this happened, he would have survived, if that makes sense. But regardless, I can see this scene being emotional as hell, as it could be argued maybe by Barry that Oliver died for nothing. Like I know like 1 billion extra lives were saved and brought over to Earth-1 from Earth-38 um, during the first episode, and that was all due to like, Oliver making more time. Uh, but obviously, it all got destroyed. So that conversation might be brought up like, wow, well, we failed. You, you died for no reason. You could be here, here helping us or something along those lines. So maybe that comes up. That's for us to wait and find out. Now, we do see the seven Paragons lined up here with a newly appointed uh, Paragon of Lex Luthor. Obviously, he got the uh, the appointment in a bit of a dodgy way. Uh, you might notice that Ryan Choi here has a beard. Now, the big thing about this is that um, we pick up a month later, obviously in our timeline, but also a month later in their timeline. They've been in the vanishing point for a month's time. So that's why like Ryan Choi has a beard because hasn't been able to shave and everything like that. So I wonder if that month time changes anyone here. Maybe the bonds between the different characters as well. That might have changed. That's going to be fairly interesting to see. I did see some people on Twitter saying that Supergirl has a new suit here. It just looks like the same suit, just in a... It's just dark. I think that's the best way to put it. Maybe it's a bit dirty. 
from being in the vanishing point. I don't think it's a new suit at all. But we do hear Oliver, I'm pretty sure, say the Anti-Monitor is at the dawn of time. So it seems that yes, we are going to get the Battle of the Dawn of Time from the comics. Now, just to tell you this, so in the comics, um, what happens with the Anti-Monitor is that he does everything here. So he, you know, absorbs all the power from all the various Earths uh, in the multiverse, like where it's hundreds of thousands or millions of millions, whatever it might be, the infinite Earths. He takes all that power and he uses it to travel back to the dawn of time. Now, what we see happen at the dawn of time is, as I said before, the battle of the dawn of time, when we see the heroes arrive, or see the, the heroes, or the what we have here, the Paragon. So, in the comics, it's different. It's some pretty damn OP heroes, to be completely honest, much more powerful than what we're seeing in Crisis, but they've changed it around to have the Paragons here, and they will be the ones partaking in the battle of the dawn of time. Um, now... There is like meant to be a battle beforehand when they take on this group of villains that was formed in Crisis. We actually haven't had that happen in Crisis, but I think we might see that happen um, as well. But I'll come back to that in a second because there's, there's, a, there's a little shot in the trail that hints at who might be involved there as well. And it gets you thinking who else might be involved in that battle of villains potentially, like returning characters. Um, but the Pariah is meant to come here. Um, he, this is where he's meant to go. He doesn't really go to the vanishing point. That's why I'm not too sure if he's there or not at the, at the end of the episode. I don't think he is. I think he just puts them there. Um, but the battle of the dawn of time, um, I think we see them arrive there and they're sort of struggling. That's sort of something that happens in the comics. Like they just, they just get there. They just get there. Like it's not the easiest thing to get there. And one person that helps them is actually the specter. And we will come back to that in a second. Now, as I was saying before, there was a hint in the trailer in, in like regards to maybe this, uh, our paragons versing a group of villains or some villains and that's a shot of reverse flash reverse flash is in this trailer it's a really quick thing but i will try and show you the precise screenshot when you can actually see the yellow suit of reverse flash now we're all waiting for him to come in we're like okay is he going to be in this crossover or not um obviously like the whole newspaper it was meant to be like reverse flash versus barry and that whole thing happens there and it looks like we're going to get that um i guess the big question is who else appears outside of reverse flash is Malcolm Merlin in this episode? Is Prometheus in this episode? Is uh, like Rain or something in regards to Supergirl in this episode? Is it a villain for each person? Is that what's going to happen here? Or is it just a random group of villains put, put together? Or is it maybe just Flash versus Reverse Flash? And that's meant to be like the whole hero versus villain thing uh, fight here. That's for us to wait and find out. Um, it'd be cool if they did the whole Paragons versus villains thing here. Um, but who knows if they'll actually do that. Now, as I was saying before, the Spectre helps them in regards to the Battle of Dawn of Time, and we seem to see the Anti-Monitor here facing the Spectre. Now, this is most likely Oliver in that new role. It would be very cool if this was like the reveal scene for Oliver as the Spectre. I don't know if it will be, just because there is a, a line earlier where it says the eight of us might not be enough, um, which hints that they're like together beforehand, but maybe this is after the fact or something when Anti-Monitor maybe gets a bit more powerful from something, and maybe they realize they can't do it after Spectre's got there. Who knows? But if it is Oliver in that role, I think it'd be pre pretty damn cool. You can see like the green robe slightly in this scene when he's facing Anti-Monitor. I'm guessing this will play out in a pretty epic way and hopefully it does. Um, but maybe like the Paragons are done for, like maybe just before he shows up, who knows? But maybe his line of the eight of us might not be enough. Maybe this hints at some surprise hero showing up. That'd be pretty cool. I'm not going to suggest any, even though you might be able to guess who might show up. I'm interested to see who could show up if, if there is any surprise heroes. Now we do have um, Kara or Supergirl looking up and saying like, oh my God, with all the paragons looking up to the sky. I'm guessing this is some shadow demons. I'd say this is shadow demons coming down to help out the anti-monitor in this fight. Uh, that would be the most logical thing that is happening here. Um, obviously they were involved in the opening episodes. So it makes sense they'd be involved towards the conclusion like the comic. Um, so yeah, I'd assume it's shadow demons if there are, if, if these are what they're looking at. Now, the thing with the Battle of the Dawn of Time is that when they actually, spoil alert, defeat the Anti-Monitor, these people here that are here are the only ones that remember what came before and what came after. So after this happens, there's only one Earth. Only one Earth remains. And by one Earth, I mean like there's only one Earth in this proper multiverse. So there's like the positive multiverse or the positive universe and then the antimatter universe those are the only two that exist so really we should only have one left and all these heroes are on the same earth well they, they will move to this same earth and everyone else that's formed on it will only remember that earth being there the whole time they would have any memory of the crisis beforehand anything that happened there only from 
what's happening in that universe as if there was only one earth like the multiverse with all these different earths and stuff never existed these paragons these seven paragons that we've established will be the only ones that remember stuff which is going to be crazy and i think they're going to follow through with that and i think the legends episode will deal with the fallout from that so i think episode four will be the whole battle of the dawn of time um maybe with a hint as to like the one earth maybe them getting there and no one remembering stuff and then there's going to be follow on from that so it's going to be pretty crazy but it is important to note that part four, the hour episode, will also show the origin of both the monitor and the anti-monitor. So how both of them became each and went on the different ways, I guess you could say. Um, but episode four, I think, will be the best episode out of the bunch. And episode five will be a wrap up, just like how episode one set everything up with a, and then had a cliffhanger. Um, ep- episode five might start off with some cool stuff, but then like simmer things down to almost like set up what's going to come in the future or at least in the near future of the Arrowverse with, with this new Earth, this new single Earth, potentially. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on what we went over. Um, any thoughts, theories, and stuff? What do you think of this Battle of the Dawn of Time? I think it sounds cool. And what are your thoughts on the single Earth existing post-crisis? Gets me excited, but what are your thoughts? And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.